serious games. So, as uh, you know, I am a game theorist, and today I want to speak on some striking application of game theory to auctions. And I will tell you a little bit about auctions, and I will teach you how to bid optimally in certain auctions. Um, just to start, let me say that in 96, Vickery, William Vickery won the Nobel Prize just for his seminal work on auctions. And um, let me start just uh, to warm the environment here with some history. So as you see, Babylon, 500 years before Christ, in Babylon, they started with auctions. You know what they auctioned there? Wives, okay? <laughs> and by the way, it was mandatory to be married only by auction at that time. So the expert ranked the girl from the most attractive one to the least attractive one, and he auctioned them one by one. Okay, I have to say that I'm very lucky that I was not, I didn't leave at that time because I'm sure I would not be able to afford my wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By the way, Michael, I know some friends, okay, that wish the opposite. I wish I would not be able to afford my wife. <laughs> okay. In 193 after Christ, the entire Roman Empire put on auction for sale by the Praetorian Guard. The winning bid was 25,000 sesterces, that the coin there, per man in the guard. The winner, Didius Julianus, became the Caesar at that time, but however, he lasted only for two months before he was beheaded serving as the first and probably the most extreme example of the well-known phenomena called the winner's curse, okay? Why are auctions so important? So let me tell you, auctions serve as very efficient mean to transact in billions, hundreds of billions, probably trillions of dollars, all kinds of objects. It can be government contracts, it can be art objects, it can be antiques, it can be fresh flowers, livestock, government bonds, oil drilling, uh, uh, oil drilling rights, or licenses of uh, mobile frequencies, or whatever. The most striking example, actually, is that are the auctions where they transfer public assets into private assets. And you know a lot of examples, I mean, quite recently. Uh, let me start with some very specific examples of auctions, and I try to analyze. There are many, many, and it's very tricky business. How to analyze auction? In the sense, what is the optimal bidding in each one of them? But here I have very little time, so I go through only very few of them. The English auction, okay? The auctioneer raises the price gradually until only one remains in the room. If it's too high for you, you leave the room. When, once only one remains in the room, that person is the winner of the auction and pays the last price quoted. Now, Japanese auction. Sometimes, not always, it goes the same way except that you have to push, press a button. All bidders press buttons. If the price goes too high, then they remove their finger and go out. Again, the last that remains. And once they press the button on the screen, you have a liquid fluid that goes up. And once uh, only one remains, it stops. And the price on the screen is the price that that winner bidder pays. So it's exactly like the English auction except that it goes continuously and not by increments. eBay online auction. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. This is exactly like the English auction. However, it is, it is done on computers. And finally, my last example is the one in the Netherlands, which is uh, the Dutch descending auction. What they do, they have a giant clock usually, 
and the clock ticks down. You start from very high price, the clock ticks down until somebody shouts, cries, mine, okay? At that point, when uh, the, the, that person said mine, the clock stops, and the person that shouted is the winner and pays the price on the clock. So we have three ascending auction, one descending auction. There are many other sealed bid auctions. I have no time to talk about that today. What is the best bidding strategy for the buyer? So if you are a bidder, I can tell you about the first three of them. They, they are all the same, actually, and very simple, non-manipulable strategically. I'm talking about the English, Japanese, or online auction. In all of them, you behave the same way, and I tell you what is the way. Think very, very carefully. What is the value that you assign to the object? Okay, what does it mean, the value? You look at the object and say, I'm ready to pay for that 100, not a penny more. Actually, I'm indifferent between paying 100 and take the object or leave the room. Okay, so this is the maximum, maximum that you're willing to pay. That is what you should bid. For instance, if you are on eBay, put an automatic bid that you outbid all the others as long as it is below your value. If it reaches your value, you're out. Is this clear? So, and moreover, I say, it's called in game theory dominant strategy. Namely, this is the optimal strategy of the bidder, okay? No matter what the other bidders do. You don't care what they do. In that sense, it's not up and up for strategic manipulation. So it's very, very simple. What about the Dutch auction? Very complicated. Using in order to solve it, you need to solve the differential equations and stuff like this. And sometimes you're stuck. It's very, very difficult. These days, by the way, a lot of computer scientists, Shimon, uh, work on game theory, okay, in, in working on auction, trying to solve numerically the optimal strategy. Many, many of them do it. Okay, now, if you want to sell an object, how do you sell an object? So let me tell you. Among the, actually, it is quite uniform, even with comparing with other auctions. The best, under some circumstances, but general, the best auction for you to sell is the English auction, or for that matter, the Japanese or online, they're all uh, equivalent. So if you want to sell something, for instance, you can sell it on eBay. Okay, that will guarantee you, on expectation, the highest revenue you can extract. So if you are, if uh, you are on eBay and you are a bidder, bid your own valuation. If you are on eBay, if you want to sell some object, you are better off selling on eBay. However, I want to say that I have some caveats to that that I'll speak in a moment. But here is uh, the game theory one that I want to mention on a personal note. Uh, my daughter sits here. Mickey, where are you? Hi, Mickey. Uh, and she used to work for a company in the UK called QXL. At that time, she inspired me and other good three friends, one of them is also a professor in game theory, to start our, our online auction ourselves. And we did it. It's called Bid or Buy. And we did it in South Africa for some good reasons and in India. In India, we succeeded to merge with a local, one, uh, local company called Bazi. And uh, the, this enterprise was sold to eBay for $55 million two years later, while the site was quite bleeding, I have to say. In South Africa, we are, we are still leading the, probably the only uh, online auction, and we grow about 60% every year. Three, four years later, that was in 1999 that we started, but few years later, after following QXL, we saw that QXL is actually undervalued and not well managed. So the four of us, together with some European group called the uh, Florescent, we succeeded to change the, the board. Two of us became board members on QXL, and from the other group, other two also sat on the board, and we started really running the company, at least the strategic way of running the company. So luckily, uh, after uh, three years, 
Uh, the company, when we started it, when we came in, the value of the company was $65 million. And three years later, a South African company by the name of Naspers acquired the company for almost $2 billion, okay, $1.9 billion. So that was a, a huge success at the time. And I think it, that I really attribute it to very st strategically thinking and working very hard on that. Um, I have to say, uh, by the way, just for, uh, to, to give you the, how big it is, one of the most successful sites was in Poland. Okay, Poland. Only 12% penetration in Poland. I want to ask you, how many page views you think, okay, where, I mean, you had on the site in Poland every month? Monthly number of page, page views on the Polish site. Site. Anyone wants to guess? Huh? Thousand. Thousand. No. I mean, anyone? What? Sixty millions. Very good. More. <laughs> what about four hundred million? A lot, huh? The answer is four billion pages every month. So it's a huge. People are doing a getting into the auction sites, and they transact like crazy for your information, not to talk about eBay, because QXL is about less than or about 1% of eBay. Um, I want to say that, as I mentioned before, um, these days game theorists consult to the government, to private bidders, to companies, how to, um, uh, how to bid optimally or how, or how to design the auction in a most efficient way for the government. Let me continue. Remember I told you that the English auction is the best for the seller. Not always. The English auction sometimes is open for some manipulation. Some of them are very, very sophisticated. Let me give you a very nice example. In Germany, uh, for the second generation, they uh, license frequencies of the mobile second generation. And they thought, the government thought, that they are going to extract billions of Deutschmarks. That was in uh, 1999, okay? And what happened? Two main competitors were there, Menesman and T-Mobile. Okay, now see what happens, but let me tell you what is the rule of the game. If you want to outbid me, you have to offer 10% more. There were 10 blocks of frequencies that were putting on auction. Okay, you can buy each one separately, all of them, whatever you want. But if somebody put a bid and you want outbid him, you have to increase it by at least 10%. Look, management was the first one. And what they did, on the right one, on the right five blocks, they offered for all of them 20 million Deutschmark. On the left five blocks, they offered 18.18 million Deutschmarks, 18.18, what a number. Ah, huh? Exactly. So this is leave and let leave, okay? T-Mobile, aha, we got it. Okay, so what happened is this. T-Mobile understood that if they raise the price 18.18 by 10%, what is the new price? 20. So that was a hidden signal for them. You raise the price of the left five, don't outbid us for the right five blocks, and that's what happened. T-Mobile got five blocks for 20 million, Mansman got the other five blocks also for 20 million, and it was completely legal because they did not collude, and the government got 40 million instead of thinking of getting billions of dollars. Um, let me just mention winner scares. For instance, I'll give you one example. You take a jar of coins that you can look through, okay? And everyone looks on the jar of coins and decide how much to bid. I sell this jar of coins on auction, okay? So uh, the highest bidder wins the object, the jar with the coins, but have to pay, they have to pay the bid, okay? It's called first price auction. So. What happens, I did it myself at least 30 times in classes 
provided that you have like 30 students in the class. I really encourage you to do it in parties or whatever. You will see how it works beautifully. You always make money, okay? <laughs> now, why you make money? Why do you get more than the content of the value of the job, okay? The reason is this. If you look on the average, some overshoot, some undervalue it. On the average, they are quite right. Actually, on the average, there was a lot of experiments. The average is that a little bit below the real price, okay, the real value. However, who wins? The one with the highest valuation. If this guy even reduced by 10%, 5%, 15%, still he is below the average. And therefore, he pays more than the value. It's very, very well-known phenomena. It's called the winner's curse phenomena. And since I have one minute, I, I'll finish with my example on the dollar auction. A dollar auction is, goes like this. Also played a lot of in classes, and it's quite amazing. Here it is. I sell a dollar in an ascending English auction. Okay? Except that I change a little bit the rule. The winner pays his bid or her bid and get the dollar. However, the second highest bidder also pays and get nothing. Is this clear? What do you think the dollar is sold for on the average? It was the experience. I mean, we made a lot of experiment about it. There are, you can read in books and stuff like this, but what do you think? Your intuition? Huh? Actually, it was in classes. It was 1.68 on the average. What's going on here? When I see that, let's say we start outbidding, it's enough that somebody else comes in. I put 50 cents. You put 51 cents. Then I know that I'm going to lose my 50 cents. I put 52 cents. Ba, 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 ba. You put a dollar. I am with 99 cents. Oh, I'm going to lose my 99 cents. Dollar and one. Okay? Dollar. And it's a, really an attrition game. That some, sometimes it ends up with $10, $15. But on the average, it ends up with $1.68. And I thank you very much for your... Uh,